Techno Update. Subscribe now. The phone ships in a classic Meizu style box. Inside of it, you can find all the usual stuff that includes a fast charger. The M6 Note does not follow the trend of those full screen budget phones. Instead, it sports a more traditional design with a 5.5 inch 1080p LCD display that has a reasonably small bezels. That display is just brilliant, it's plenty sharp and bright for both indoor and outdoor use. However, the type of protection glass is not specified, but I'm yet to scratch it. The design and overall build quality are just excellent. Yes, I agree that we've seen this design before, but that all metal shell just feels nice in the hand, much better than any glass made phones, but that's just my opinion. The phone has a rather compelling dual camera setup that consists of one 12 megapixel shooter with bright f1.9 aperture lens and another 5 megapixel snapper. There is also a quad LED light setup for better night photography. There is a 16 megapixel shooter on the front. As usual, let me cover a few features in a nutshell. There is a bright notification LED light, a fingerprint scanner is fast and accurate but you have to wake the phone up first before you can use it. Also the phone still uses a micro USB part instead of the USB Type-C. The buttons are very nice, the SIM card tray does not rattle, the sound quality via the headset jack is excellent and the loudspeaker is actually one of the best you can find on any budget phone. I just love that the Meizu M6 Note has a Snapdragon 625 chipset. Yes, it's not the most powerful one, but it has plenty of power for the majority of users. Also, it's probably the most power efficient processor you can find. I have a cheaper model that has 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage that is expandable via the microSD card slot. You can also opt in for a 4GB and 64GB model that sounds like a perfect combo to me. The gaming performance is near excellent, there are just minor skipped frames in some games but they're not even worth complaining about. The phone handles games on the highest graphics settings very well and does not get really hot while gaming. You're going either to love it or hate the FlyMe OS that is built on top of Android 7.1. For some users, the UI may look a little bit confusing or too much inspired by iOS, but they personally love using this phone mainly due to its speed and fluidity. An integrated touchpad makes one button navigation a breeze. There are also some settings and customization options that many of the phones have had for years. I like a huge variety of themes, wallpapers, and other tweaks and settings that allow me to customize the phone. There are also plenty of gesture and motion controls that work quite well. The camera app takes pictures very fast. There are some shooting modes like Bokeh to utilize the secondary sensor, a pro mode that allows you to adjust some image settings, and a slow motion video mode. Unfortunately, the settings menu still works only in portrait mode, and there is no auto HDR feature. The image quality is very good overall, and the pictures are easily one of the best from any budget phone. Obviously, it can be picky for higher noise levels than usual in some of the pictures, but in general, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. The pictures taken using that bokeh mode look great too, as the object is nicely separated from the background. Also, focus point can be adjusted after you take the picture. Honestly, this is one of the best dual camera implementations I've seen on a budget phone. The low light image quality is again probably the best you can get from a phone that does not even cost 200 bucks. Really impressive results thanks to that bright f1.9 aperture lens. Selfies taken with that beefy 16 megapixel sensor look nice and sharp. The 1080p selfie video looks good too as there is plenty of detail. The sound recording quality is quite good except for quite a poor noise reduction implementation that makes some weird background noise. 720p slow motion video looks kind of okay, not really impressive, but this is what you have to expect from any budget phone. 
the Meizu M6 Note performs very well in the connectivity department. The call quality is great, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi work fine, and the GPS is very accurate, thanks to that Snapdragon 625 chipset. Also, the phone has a bunch of different sensors, including a gyroscope for VR compatibility. If you combine a huge 4000 mAh battery with the most power-efficient chipset, you should expect great results, right? The Meizu M6 Note has a fantastic battery life. Depending on how you use the phone, you can easily get 2 or even 3 days out of it. I usually install a lot of apps that are syncing in the background, but I still manage to get over 11 hours of screen at time. The supplied Meizu's fast charger fully charges the phone in just about one and a half hours. The Meizu M6 Note is my new favorite budget smartphone, despite a tough competition. Sure, it has a few caveats like a micro USB port instead of the USB Type-C, the fingerprint scanner does not work straight from the standby mode, and even though I love the FlyMe OS, it's definitely not for everyone since it's far from the stock Android look and feel. On a positive side, the Meizu M6 Note simply looks great, it has a flagship grade build quality, the display is sharp, the overall performance is near excellent, and the battery life is one of the best you can find on any phone. If you add a dual camera setup that takes wonderful images for the price of the phone, I think that the pros easily outweigh the cons. That's why I think that the Meizu M6 Note is one of the best phones for the price.